Are you looking for a small travel trailer under 20 feet long that's easy to tow? Well, stick around, folks. We found three awesome floor plans. You're going to want to check these out. Hey everybody, Mike from RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing and we invite you to subscribe to our channel and be sure to hit that notification bell when you do so you'll be notified every single week when we put out a brand new video. But without any further ado, let's get started on our reviews of travel trailers under 20 feet long. This travel trailer is the Forest River Aurora model number 16 BHX. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 4,396 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,427 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 5,823 pounds. The hitch weight is 396 pounds. It measures in at just 19 feet 6 inches long and it can sleep up to 5 people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side is where the big owner's bed is located. Then we wrap around through the living area, kitchen area, and in the back of this trailer is where the bunk beds are and the bathroom is right behind me. So our first impression when we walked into this camper was that, hey, you know what? This is a great family camper. It's a great starter camper too because it's smaller, so it's easy to tow. There's no slides, so there's just less stuff to have to deal with. And you can sleep up to five people in here. So great family starter camper for sure. Now at the front here, let's check out the size of this bed. And this mattress is about 74 inches. And it is... 60 inches wide, so it would be considered a short RV queen sized bed. Now up top here, they have this nice shelf so you can store some things overhead. Then there's a window on the one side so you can get some fresh air in here. On both sides of the bed, there are USB ports. And on this end, there's also a receptacle. Now at the headboard area, you can lift up this little area here, and then you have a little bit of storage underneath. One thing to note is this side opens up, the other side doesn't. So if you have stuff in here, it might slide down there and you kind of have to kind of reach in there and grab it. Now your TV location is right here above the bed area as well. And this is a great spot if you want to lay in bed and watch TV at night or sit on your couch and watch TV. Perfect spot for that. You've got your cable and antenna and a receptacle above so you can plug everything in. So here we are right next to the bed and this is where the living area is and first of all up top we have a little corner shelf here so you can plug things in pop your phone up here and let it sit there and charge overnight while you're sleeping then up above here we've got these three cabinet doors that open up to one big storage area below that you have a nice size window behind your couch so you can get some airflow through here and then your couch itself actually serves three different purposes. First of all, it's just a couch to chill out and relax and watch some TV. Second of all, this is your dinette and there is a standalone table that comes with this unit. So you can set your table up right here and enjoy a meal. Now, if you're a family of four or five, you're probably not going to do that because only two people could really sit here and eat dinner, maybe three. Uh, but a lot of folks that have smaller campers also buy like a clam style canopy and they'll put that over top of their picnic table outside and therefore they can use that outdoor space as well as an extension of their camping now the other thing that this does is it does jackknife into another bed so there you go you get three uses out of it and if you do that this particular bed measures in at about i don't know 56 inches by we'll call it 44 inches wide. So definitely um, a one child or maybe even two could sleep here depending on how big they are. Now behind this is where your bunk beds are located. Now each of these bunks, uh, we look for four different properties or features in a bunk bed. First of all, we look for a window, a light, a receptacle and a USB port. Now up top here, this bunk has a light and a USB port. Certainly good enough to get by. It does not have a window, but that's okay. I mean, the kids can turn on the light and use the USB to play their games and stuff on their phones before they go to sleep at night. Down below, there's another bunk. This has three out of the four features. It's got a light, a USB, and an electrical receptacle. And then down below the bottom bunk, there's even more storage. 
Now the kitchen area in here is what we call an inline kitchen. And all that means is all the kitchen appliances are in one line. It's a very efficient kitchen setup. Starting from the top here, you've got this very large cabinet overhead with tons of storage inside. Then below that, we have our range hood and light. You have a nice kitchen window here for some natural light to come in, and you can also get some cross ventilation here. Kitchen sink is a good size for a small trailer like this, and you have this big gooseneck faucet over top. And then they have a two burner range in here. And this is actually a GE profile burner top. And G if you don't know anything about GE, the profile is one of their upgraded ones. I think the monogram is the highest level, but profiles right below it. So they went and put a really nice cooktop in here for you. Now below that, we also have some storage underneath of the sink and the cooktop as well. In addition to that, on the end over here, is another electrical receptacle. So if you wanted to stick a coffee pot or a toaster somewhere up here, you can run the cord over and plug it in right on the end. Now, as we get closer to the end of the kitchen setup, you have a microwave oven right here. And then below that, you have a refrigerator. Now this refrigerator is a little bit on the small side and there is no separate freezer. In fact, there's no freezer in here at all. So if you like ice cubes and you wanna make some ice cubes. We actually have an article called, I think it's the 10 best ice makers that you can buy for your RV. And if you click the link right up here, it'll take you right to our article over on rvblogger.com and you can see our recommendations for ice makers. So here I am in the bathroom and as usual, I'm standing in the shower and you guys know I'm 5'11 and man, I am just barely making it in here. So I would say you have about six feet one of headroom inside this shower, but the shower basin here is huge. I mean, it's really nice and wide, so it feels very spacious in here. Now, some of you may be wondering like, hey man, there's no tile on the walls. There's no surround in here. Is this going to leak? Is this okay? And it is okay. These walls are water resistant and they are caulked with silicone caulk in all the corners. And when you own a trailer like this, the main thing you need to do is just make sure you keep up on your caulking maintenance because if you don't you'll get some water damage in the corners that is for sure there's also no place in here for soap dispensers or anything like that susan and i bought a soap dispenser for our own rv it mounts right to the wall and it's got like three or four spots in there like liquid soap you know shampoo conditioner and it's right easy to access on the wall that would be perfect for a shower like this then it also has a shower curtain now if you guys have seen me do videos before you know i don't like shower curtains because they blow in on you and stick to you when you're taking a shower and if you're not careful and part of the curtains outside of the shower you can get water on the floor so i'd recommend just buy a retractable shower door and install it yourself they're really a piece of cake and they're relatively inexpensive and easy to do now, just outside of the shower, there is no vanity and all that stuff, but they try to make up for it in a couple different ways. Number one, they mount this mirror on the wall, and then they put a little shelf up here, and there's also a receptacle here. And I was like, man, that's like a really weird spot for a receptacle. But now that I think about it, it makes some sense because if you're in here, you're blow drying your hair, or you have your curling iron or you're shaving, at least you got something to plug in and you can stand in front of the mirror and do those things. There's also a little towel hook back here. And then finally, while I'm sitting on the commode, you know, on the one side here, I'm hitting the wall, but on the other side, I have plenty of space. In the very front of this travel trailer, there's also a large amount of storage space under the front bed. This travel trailer is the Forest River Wildwood FSX 164 RBLE. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 2,819 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,061 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 3,880 pounds. The hitch weight is 380 pounds. It measures in at 20 feet even, and it can sleep up to two people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side is where the bed is located. As we wrap on around, we come into the kitchen and living area and behind me here is the bathroom that runs side to side. So our first impression when we walked in here was, you know, this is a nice compact travel trailer. And the big feature is that the bed is right here, which means it's not a Murphy bed. You don't have to make it. You don't have to set it up. You don't have to do anything. It just always stays a bed. Now, some of you guys may not like that because some folks say they don't like the entryway near their bed 
or it's always in the bed position so it's not multifunctional. Let us know in the comments down below if you would want to see this as a Murphy bed or not, or you know, just what you think about it. But anyway, this is where your bed is located. Let's get a measurement on it real quick. It is about 74 inches long and 60 inches wide. So this will be considered a short queen size bed in here. Now, the mattress that comes with this camper, you know, this is just an entry level camper. So they didn't really upgrade the mattress very much, if at all, there's no upgrade to this at all. This is a basic three inch foam mattress. Uh, the first thing I would do if I bought this camper is go buy a better mattress right away so I can get a good night's sleep. Now, over top and around of the bed, you have all this cabinetry. Over top, you have a good amount of storage space behind these two cabinets. And then on each side, there's a wardrobe cabinet where you can hang your garments in here and there's still room below to store even more items. There's also a little end table on each end of the bed. And then there's a receptacle located on each side as well. So if you need to plug in any kind of electronics before you go to sleep, you can certainly do that. Now they kind of have a neat feature underneath this bed. They just left it wide open like this. So I don't know, you could kick your shoes off and throw them in under here, but I know Susan would probably buy a few bins, line them all up under here and then store different things in those bins. So they're handy and organized whenever we need them. Also, the TV location is right here, which isn't a good spot. I mean, you could mount your TV here, get it on a swing arm, and then you could watch TV while you're in bed at night or swing it the other way and watch TV from the couch. Now we're moving over to the kitchen area, and this is what we call an inline kitchen. And all that means is that all of your kitchen appliances are in a line. Now, again, this is a very basic camper. It's your starter version of a camper. And so there are some of the appliances that you might find in more expensive campers are not in here, but we'll run through that together. Now up top here, you have a nice big cabinet up top. There's no hardware that will hold this door open, so it just falls down. But you can buy some hardware really inexpensively and install it yourself. So when you put the door up, it'll stay up and then you can lower it back down again. Now below that, we have a two burner cooktop on the right hand side. I love the way they did this. They put one burner in front of the other burner and that way it saves a little bit of countertop space. So you got some space here in the middle between your burners and your sink. Now you'll also notice in the sink, you know, it's not the hugest sink, but it'll do the trick. And you have a nice gooseneck faucet overhead so you can wash your dishes. I love the fact that there's a window over top of the kitchen sink. The natural light that comes in just makes it a lot easier space to work with the extra lighting. And then of course there is a receptacle up here. So if you have a coffee pot or a toaster that you want to put here on the counter, you can plug it right in. Now down below the cooktop and the sink, we have a couple of drawers here for all of your kitchen utensils. And then there's also another cabinet here with a little bit of storage underneath the sink. So one appliance that seems to be missing in here is a microwave and the other is an oven. I guess you could maybe bring a countertop microwave along with you if you really needed to do that. Uh, some folks like to use their microwave when they're cooking or an oven. Let us know in the comments down below what you think about that. Do you use your microwave or do you use an oven when you're camping? So it'll be interesting to see what all your thoughts are on that. Now, just next to the kitchen area, well, next to the sink and everything, is where the refrigerator is located. Now, this door kind of swings the wrong way, and I just want to let you know, many times you can reverse the swing on a refrigerator door, and that's what I would do. It should open this way, not the other way. And so the point is though, this is a great size refrigerator for a small camper. You've got a separate freezer that's huge and a really nice size refrigerator too. Now the couch is right across from the kitchen and it's just a small basic couch. It's got a little bit of storage underneath of it, but I think you could use it as a bed, maybe for a little kid. I'll throw the measuring tape on it anyway, just to see how big it is. If you did have a little, a little kid that you bring camping with you. Sometimes we bring our grandkids keeping with up, camping with us. So this is 56 inches by 26 inches. So, I don't know, I guess a small child could fit on there or you might just blow up an air mattress and put it on the floor so they don't roll off of their bed. Now above the couch in here, you have this nice window so you can get some light in here as well. And then above that, you have these two gigantic cabinet doors which offer tons of storage. 
Now, here we are in the very back of this trailer, and I'm in the bathroom, standing in the shower like I usually do. And let's see how much headroom that we have in here in the shower space. So you have a really good amount, I think. I mean, up into this little fan area, you've got six feet, five inches of headroom. And the normal headroom throughout the trailer uh, is six feet, eight, not six feet, six inches. So, you know, not a bad amount of ceiling height inside here. Now, this is just a very basic shower stall. It has a wand that's removable, but they don't even have like a plastic shower surround in here or anything. They're just using the trailer walls. It's okay to do that, but the key to doing this is making sure that all of these corners always stay caulked. So over time, you've got to keep an eye on that and keep all your caulking maintained so this won't get water damaged. Now, it also has a shower curtain in here, and you know, it's fine if you have a shower curtain in here. I prefer what's called a retractable shower door. You can buy those relatively inexpensively, and you can install them yourself. The advantage to them is when you're taking a shower, you don't have the curtain blowing in and sticking to you while you're taking your shower, and you also don't have to worry about your shower curtain sort of falling out of the shower and being on the wrong side, and then water getting on your floor. So now Susan's standing in the shower and I'm in the other side of this bathroom and they have this gigantic closet over here and it's a big wardrobe closet. So this is really where a bunch of your storage is gonna take place. You can hang your garments in here. There's still room for storage underneath. And then there's a big open storage area underneath. And I guess they decided that maybe the storage area was more important than putting a vanity and a medicine cabinet and a sink and all that stuff. You can always wash your hands out in the kitchen sink or install a little hand sanitizer in here so you can use that on your hands after you use the restroom. Now, here I am on the commode, and since this bathroom runs from side to side in this camper, I am gonna pass the elbow test all day long. This travel trailer is the Jayco J Feather 166FBS. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 3,895 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,100 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 4,995 pounds. The hitch weight is 415 pounds. It measures in at 19 feet 7 inches long and it can sleep up to three people. When you first walk into this travel trailer, you enter towards the back where the refrigerator and bathroom are located. As you wrap on around, you have your living and dining area, your kitchen area, and then your bed is towards the front of the camper. Now, our first impression when we walked in here was, you know what, this is a really kind of roomy camper, camper for a camper that's under 20 feet long. It's really, really done very well. Now, you'll notice on my left-hand side here is where you have a little uh, pantry closet and there's another little cabinet down below where you can store things away just next to that you've got your refrigerator and your separate freezer up top this is a 12 volt fridge which we're seeing in almost every travel trailer these days then as we wrap on around we have our kitchen area now starting up top here you've got this really nice big cabinet here and then right next to that you've got a convection microwave oven. Now, we have a convection microwave in our RV, and now that I've learned to use it properly, we really, really love it. Uh, we can cook pizzas in there, we can cook all kinds of stuff in there, just like you would bake in a normal oven. So if you have a convection microwave in your RV, let us know in the comments below how you like it, any special recipes or anything you do in there that would you know, help the rest of us to learn. Let us know in the comments down below. Now, next below our convection microwave, we've got a three burner stove here. And then you've got a decent amount of countertop space next to that, but a very, very small sink built in here. It's, it's really too small to be washing dishes and stuff like that. It does have a little gooseneck faucet overhead and a window over top, which is great. And I love this backsplash that's on here. It just makes it look a lot nicer. It just gives it a better finish, but I would have probably preferred in a camper this size to see a two burner cooktop front to back and it would have used half of this space and then you would have a lot more countertop space here for you know a coffee pot or a toaster or whatever you want to use now another nice feature is just below the sink there is a receptacle here so if you do have a toaster oven or a coffee pot here you can just plug it right in and there you go make your coffee in the morning there's also additional storage underneath of the kitchen sink. And of course there's a pots and pans drawer below that. And then finally there is additional storage under the cooktop 
as well. So here we are at the sofa in here. Now this sofa serves really three different purposes. Number one, you can be nice and comfy here and watch the TV that's right across from you. It's perfect location for that. Uh, number two, you can use these little end tables or I don't know what you call them, coffee tray tables, side tables, and, you know, use these to eat a meal while you're sitting here. Or you could even work, you know, while you're and use one of these too. Now, these little end tables just pop right out. They fit into the cup holder or you can pop them back in. Either way is fine. But if you don't like the little side tables, another option is to just grab this freestanding table and set it up right here in front of your sofa and then you can sit here and, and enjoy a meal on your table. Another nice advantage with these freestanding tables is you can take them outside and use them as well. So before I show you the final option of how this sofa is used, let me remove a couple things, pull these babies off. And before I jackknife this sofa out, I do want to show you though, that there's some nice storage underneath here as well. All three drawers open, and so it just gives you a lot of extra storage space. And so this can be your sofa, this can be your dinette, and then finally, you can jackknife it out into another bed. And if you do that, you end up with a bed that's about 72 inches wide or long by about 42 inches wide. So an adult could sleep on here, maybe two small kids could make it, but you do have an additional sleeping spot right here. Now, just above this area, you've got all these cabinets up here. It's just one big area with four doors of access, plenty of storage up there. A couple of other really nice features in this area are that you have a receptacle and USB ports on each end of the sofa. We love to have that at our dinette area personally because we work at our dinette. And we also use our dinette for trip planning and things like that. So if you need a computer out, it's nice to be able to plug it in and you've got options on each end of the sofa for that. Now, across from where the sofa is located is where the TV entertainment center is. Uh, you have a nice size TV here. And the good thing is you can see it from the sofa, but you can also see it while you're laying in bed at night. And there's even more storage built behind here. You just pull this little lever out, TV swings out and you've got additional storage back there. And they also have just a couple drawers below that that are full extension drawers. You can store even more stuff there. So here I am in the very front of this trailer and you'll see this is where the bed is located. Now I know a lot of you guys are already thinking, man, I don't want a bed that goes side to side because if we're sleeping in here, who's ever on the far side has to climb over the other person to get out and use the bathroom. But in a camper that's less than 20 feet long, it's gonna be really tough to find a north-south bed. But all that being said, let's see what size this bed is that's in here. I think it's a decent size. It's 54 inches by 80 inches. So that would be a residential like full-size full bed. bed, right? Full size. So there you go, great size. Now over top here, you've got four cabinet doors that open to one big storage area. And then you've got a light underneath or two of the bed, another light out here. You've got a tower of power here at the head of your bed and a little shelf so you can, you know, throw your phone up there or tablet and it can charge overnight. There's also a window at either end of the bed so you can get a nice cross breeze in here. And then finally, underneath these storage doors, there is a lot of space available there. Now here I am in the bathroom and many of you guys know if you've seen our videos before I'm 5'11 and I'm standing in here with about I don't know three or four inches over my head in the skylight. Let's see what we got. Okay we have 75 inches so six feet three inches and the whole entire camper itself goes to six feet six inches tall. As you know, the showers are always raised up a little bit in travel trailers so that the plumbing trap can work under the drain. That's why they put a skylight overhead because otherwise my head might be hitting the ceiling right now. So the shower's lifted up, they put a skylight over top and it gives you plenty of room inside your shower. Now, I'm not a big fan of this shower right away. I'll just tell you, it's too small for me. Um, I, you know, I mean, I'm really cramped in here and it's just not enough room. And then on top of that, we have a shower curtain that wraps around and I am sure I would have water all over the floor if I took a shower in here. But anyway, you can pull the shower curtain around 
and take a shower in here. Uh, outside of the shower, we have the medicine cabinet located right here. This is still a little, little stiff because it's brand new, but that will loosen up over time. Below that, we have a nice size vanity sink, beautiful faucet, receptacle right next to the sink for your curling iron, hair dryer, whatever you need, a towel ring, and then additional storage down below the vanity. Now, just above the toilet is some open storage that's up here, and you could store, you know, some TP and some towels or things like that. You also have a couple towel hooks here so you can hang them up when you're done taking a shower. And finally, on the commode, doing the elbow test, no dice on that side, plenty of room on this side. Now, outside this travel trailer, there are a couple of nice storage compartments. There's this one here that actually has a receptacle inside of it. And if you can get a little mini fridge in here, you could plug that right in. And then you have sodas and beers and all that stuff ready to go. And then you have a front pass-through storage here so you can stow away all your gear. Hey guys, let us know which one of these travel trailers you like the most and why in the comments down below. We would love to hear from you. But if you want to check out even more travel trailers under 20 feet long, just click the box down below and Susan and I will see you in the next video.